Hi everyone, Ryan here, Ion Capital Solutions. Hope you're doing well. Today I wanna to talk to you about the role of equity as it relates to assets when we are essentially trying to leverage those assets for securing a loan, right? Or trying to eject cash out of equity or whatever it may be, right? We need to understand how that actually works. There's some caveats here. Many are under the impression if they have an asset that they recently purchased, they can eject all this cash out of it, which is not true, right? There's a role of seasonality. There's the equity, right? The lender's loan to value ratio. Anyway, we're going to dig into this stuff, but this is a good topic, okay? Anybody dealing in assets, you have to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're just going to confuse yourself, confuse the client, waste the lender's time, waste your own and the client's time. And anyway, it's not going to go anywhere. So let's dig in. Okay, so leveraging equity, okay? <clears throat> Please understand when somebody purchases an asset, right? And the bank comes up with the majority of the money, that person doesn't own the asset. The majority is really owned by the bank, right? And technically the bank owns it outright until we pay it off. The equity we have in that asset is depending on amount upon, excuse me, the amount of money that we've paid the bank, the lender, whoever it is, right? So when we consider cashing out, right? When we consider trying to place a lien, we can't put it on the overall value of the property. Okay, again, to make clear, it can only be based on the amount of equity, okay? And it's also important to understand that even if we own it outright, it doesn't necessarily mean that the full value of that property is available in the form of a cash out refi or even a lien. So let's look over some scenarios, some information here, okay? So hard money lenders, right? When you talk to a hard money lender and you're looking to purchase a property, whether you're intending to flip that property, right, for a, for a, a profit or you're looking to refinance it and hold on to it and turn it into a uh, Airbnb, a rental, whatever it is. You don't own the property. The lender owns the property until you pay the lender off, right? But the lender wants to see cash reserves. So how much cash do they want to see? Well, typically it's 30% in liquid cash they want to see in reserves. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that that's exactly what you're going to have to put down, but at the end of the day, that's what they want to see, right? They want to see of the purchase price, you have 30%. Right, that's what they want to see. So to make clear, okay? And when it comes to refinancing options, right? Specifically cash out, understand that even a property you have significant equity in or full equity and you own outright, they're only going to be providing roughly 65 to 75% LTV, loan to value ratio of what they'll be willing to allow in you ejecting cash out or even placing a lien on the property for in that amount, right? So if it's, you know, 100,000, right? It, they would only allow 65,000 or, or up to 75,000, right? That you could eject cash out or you could, you know, borrow that amount and place a lien against the property, whatever it is to make clear, right? Or the asset, whatever it is. Please also understand that, that any, any investor who recently purchased a property and rehabbed it or whatever it is, there needs to be seasoning there before they can refinance and hold on to it for a long-term mortgage, right? They, there needs to be at least four to six months seasoning, and that's just for residential deals. And it can be longer for commercial deals and whatever else. And there's nuance here, and it depends on the type of deal. But you have to understand the role of seasoning. They can't immediately refinance it. They also can't immediately uh, eject cash out of it because they don't own it because they have to pay off the lender, right? So these things need to be understood and you're going to have clients that come to you with these questions and you can't just say, yep, we can do that. Send me your docs. I'm going to forward to the letter. It's just a waste of your time and everybody's time. How many phone calls did you have on the phone with that client discussing this topic? That's the problem. This is the problem many brokers run into because they don't take time to understand these things and, and follow the correct procedure. So if you don't want these things to happen to you, know your stuff, right? Anyway, Let's talk about securing a loan, right? When securing a loan, that role of equity is still there, right? If, if you want to purchase, you know, you want to say to the lender, I need $100,000 for a cash injection to my business, right? That, that's what the borrower wants. The lender 
is only going to allow them to secure the loan against a certain amount of equity they have in that asset. But it's not that simple. It comes down to what kind of asset we're talking about. Is it real estate? Is it equipment? And if is it vehicles? And if it's vehicles, what's the year they're making the model? Is there a, a, a market of sale of that asset in the case of default? If the client doesn't pay back, the lender is going to claim that asset and then sell that asset to get their money back. Can, does the lender even know how to do that? Is there a market for that asset? Is there value in that asset? There's going to be a role of appraisal, right? Uh, whatever it may be for them to determine whether or not it's worth their time, right? I once had a client who had oil rigs all over Alaska and was pulling out giant golden nuggets out of the earth the size of my head and sending me pictures. And he had between diamonds and gold and and uh, and large equipment and vehicles. He had so many assets and, and so many different things that I thought, wow, this is going to be the easiest client I ever had. He wanted, I forget, it was in the millions, whatever it may be. And I shopped this guy around to several lenders and the lender said, listen, this looks like a great client. If he wants us an unsecured option, we can do something for him, right? But at the end of the day, what he wants is something more premium and to secure it alongside of assets or whatever it is. And we're just not comfortable with that because we don't know what to do with those assets. What are we going to do with a 10 ton rig that drills for oil in Alaska? We don't know what to do with that. If he defaults, not saying he would, but if he does, how would we ever secure that loan, how would we ever sell that asset? And we just don't know what to do with it. You know, we don't specialize in, in, in gold and diamonds and all these things he's trying to pledge is, uh, you know, it, it's crazy. You know, it's, if he has a piece of real estate and there's a market for it, sure. Right. If he's got, you know, if he wants to show us some vehicles he has that are relatively new and there's a market for, it, okay, we have a guy for that, right. Whatever it is, but we need to be realistic when it comes to securing loans. We need to understand again, the role of the loan to value ratio, right. And, Equity, 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 sale of assets in the case of default. It's extremely important that we understand these things. If we do not understand these things, we are wasting our time, the client's time, the lender's time, right? Very important, okay? Also, when we qualify clients, we should always consider equity. We should always consider assets. We should give ourselves room for flexibility. We should have a multitude of products. Anybody who's just pushing a single product or one or two products, you're making a mistake. You know, yes, I can understand why a person would think I need to home in on one area and be an expert in a specific field with a specific product. But the problem is you don't know what you're up against and you don't have flexibility for the client. You can't help them with all their needs. You can't help them find alternatives. What happens when there's a decline? Is that just the end of the deal? I'm sorry, but it's just more complex than that. If somebody convinced you it wasn't, they, they were either didn't know themselves or were lying to you. It's You've got to understand how the whole marketplace works. You have to understand how, how the borrower looks on paper as an individual, their entity, their assets, their cash flow versus their liquidity, all of these things, their credit history. There's so many things that play into it. And there's a lot of different directions they can go. If you're a cash advance specialist trying to push a cash advance at a construction group that can leverage an asset and eject cash out of, out of equity at a single digit interest rate, why would they ever take your cash advance? No wonder they're not calling you back. If you're trying to provide equipment financing to a construction group that has a large portfolio that they can, that they can leverage, that they have several deals and different funding solutions that they re require. They have long-term contracts and invoices with clients that they can leverage for factoring and they need lines of credit and all these things. They have, uh, excuse me, needs well beyond your solution, equipment financing. You have no value in their eyes. You're just an equipment financing person. They're going to deal with the consultant who can become a member of their, with, of their team and help them grow their business for the long term. Deal with an expert. That's who they feel comfortable with in helping their business. They're not comfortable with the niche product salesperson who's just trying to wave a rate in their face and bait and switch them and over promise and under deliver. And they're just not, it's happened before. It's why they're skeptical to begin with. It's why you have to cold call and they hang up the phone on you because they don't want to deal with people like that. And so you have to understand unsecured options are expensive, very expensive. And so securing a loan is less expensive or utilizing an asset and more specifically the equity and ejecting cash out of equity is just a better route. So ask yourself, do you have this kind of capability? Do you even understand how this stuff works? If you don't, you, you should get into it because it's going to change the game for you. Okay. Just 
use an asset list. Okay, it's very easy. It's, it's very easy. I used to use this for a long time, right? They would just throw it at people. Hey, you have some assets, just fill it out, send it back to me. Really easy and simple. You can copy this, create it very easily for yourself. It's not anything out of control, very easy to do, right? Um, you can even record this information verbally over the phone with a client, and write it down, keep a stack of them on your desk. Very straightforward, easy thing to do, okay? Always ask the client about their assets. Don't just focus on one product. Don't just focus on one area. Get the whole, the client, the entity, their cash flow, their liquidity, their assets on the table in front of you. Have a solid lineup of products. Understand what you can do for your clients. Become the expert. It'll set you apart because the reality is you have to know your stuff, okay? You have to know your stuff. If you want to be successful in this business, you have to know what you're doing. It, it, it's going to make all the difference. And those that want, uh, uh, you know, uh, quick results, something that's easy you just you're not going to get what you want you know you've you've got to become an expert you've got to dig in you've got to learn this stuff i'm no rocket scientist those that came before me in this industry were no rocket scientists okay at the end of the day it's just experience just putting in time putting in work and and through accruing knowledge through experience is what it takes to become that expert right so that's what it takes if you want to find success you have to know this stuff you have to know your stuff right anyway that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for your time. Good luck on your deals. I'll catch you in the next video.